morning students, faculty, and staff. My name is Bobby Wilson, and I will be displaying our guiding principles for reopening school process. And in this process, I'll be going over just the simple procedures of how our school would be successful in this new age and time. Our guiding principles for reopening, we're, we're planning on ensuring that, that all students, staff, faculty are safe. That's our primary goal, making sure that everyone's safe. How we plan on going through our philosophy, we have safety first philosophy. I repeat, a safety first philosophy. Within that safety first philosophy, we're dealing with transportation, controlled movement, cleaning uh, stations, social distancing, and our lunchroom modifications. Additional hand sanitation stations will be set up in your classrooms. Basically, if a student enters this um, campus on a bus, you will be, if you don't have a mask, you will be provided a mask. Once you get in class, if something happens to your mask and it breaks, you will be provided a mask once you enter class. So that we're constantly ensuring the safety of not just you, but others on our campus as well. Control movement. Basically what control movement is, once you step on this campus, you will be more or less driving like a car and you'll be basically almost on a one lane uh, movement. And majority of the movement, they, you'll be moving to your right. There'll be areas in the school where there might be just a, a different rotation, but we'll have uh, directional rotational arrows placed it in strategic parts of this campus. Face coverings, again, we cannot emphasize enough for us as a faculty, staff, collective unit to wear our, our face coverings. And there will be times where you'll be able to take that face mask off, prime example, in your cafeteria while you're eating and outside the cafeteria while you're eating and whatnot. So there'll be a safe haven for you. Face coverings, common areas of the classroom. Again, we're gonna consistently give you feedback on wearing uh, those face coverings inside and outside the classroom. Social distancing, again, another key term. We're gonna constantly make sure that there's no mass gathering. So we're making sure that when you're moving, you're moving and transitioning with space in between. Again, we'll be moving to our right. Mass gatherings. Mass gatherings example, uh, in the past we've had pep rallies, we've had different assemblies, but as this present moment, we're not able to uh, partake in those activities. Anytime we have a COVID-19 report, that would be reported to our principal, Ms. Savino. Our administration, our principal, Ms. Denise Savino. Our assistant principal of curriculum, Talana Green. Our assistant principal of administration, John Grisco. And of course, our illustrious student affairs um, body. And we have a great student affairs body. And, it's, and I'm gonna lead it off. My name is Bobby Wilson and I have letters A through CO. We have Mr. Nabil Amar. His alpha is CO through HA. Then we have Miss Nicole Steele. She has letters HE through MN. Next, we have Mr. James Givens. His letters are MO through R. And of course, rounding out, we have our newbie, Miss Brooklyn Cal Calloway. And she has letters S through Z. Of course, again, I repeat, we cannot function with our, our student affairs staff 
and we have a great body of student affairs workers this year, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to start off with Ms. Robin Council. She's one of our secretaries in student affairs. We have Mr. Michael Tonsto, another secretary in student affairs. We also have Ms. Dalia Joy Robinson. That's one of our nurses. Remember that, Ms. Joy. We have Ms. Deborah Frick, another nurse. And of course, closing out with um, Deputy Robert Woods in our guidance department, ladies and gentlemen. And our guidance department, I'm, I'm gonna go through our guidance counselors. We're gonna start off with Miss Amanda Levy. She's over our Collegiate Academy. Miss Jane Osgood, she represents letters A through DE. Again, A through DE. Mr. Michael Baranu, he represents letters D, I through J. Miss Cynthia Sherry, letters K through P, E. Mr. Salvador Benacourt, letters PH through S. Miss Miriam Diaz, letters T through Z. And Miss Mary Kelly, our college and career counselor. And of course, we have uh, our Collegiate Academy uh, lead, personnel, lead person, and that's Mr. Christopher Natitis. And our guidance secretary is Miss Tebow. Uh, uh, our additional available resources in guidance, we have Dr. Robert Pepe, our school psychologist, Charlotte Grant, our social worker. Uh, at this present moment, we're, um, we're waiting to fill our success coach and our um, DACA advisor. So we also have Ms. Deborah Van Pelt, our media specialist. Ms. Tamar Coffey Keller, our ESC specialist. Mr. Uh, Nufo Nava, our ESC specialist. Mr. Philip Rivera, our migrant um, liaison. And of course, that's gonna close us out. Good morning, Longhorns. My name is Nicole Steele. I'm one of the assistant principals of Student Affairs. My alpha alphabet is H-E through M-N. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you need help finding anything, my door is always open. All right, so we're going to talk about Leonard's expectations. Um, we used to have our Longhorn 5. We now have our Longhorn 3. We've condensed some things for you all to make it nice and easy. Our first expectation is for all of our students to be present not only physically in class, present in class for attendance, but you also need to be mentally present, okay? So that means you're paying attention to what your teacher is saying, you're actively engaged in the assignments, and you're learning. Our second expectation is to be productive, okay? So that means we're working on our assignments, um, we're doing what our teacher is asking us to do, we're getting our assignments done and turned in on time. Um, and also part of being productive is making sure that we have the materials we need to be successful in class. So if you know that your math teacher expects you to have notebook, paper, a pencil, and a calculator, you need to make sure that you have your notebook, a pencil, and a calculator every day, right? Um, also part of being productive is making sure you're asking for help if you need help, because if you, can't, if you not, don't understand what you're doing, you can't finish your assignments, right? So make sure you're asking for help. There's nothing wrong with needing extra help. The last expectation is for you to be polite. Okay, you need to be polite to yourself and respect yourself, but you also need to be polite to your peers, the fellow students in your class, be respectful of them, to your teachers and to all staff that's around campus. Okay, the second thing that we're gonna talk about is our bell schedule. As you can see, it's a little different this year than what we had last year for those of you who were here. Um, between third and fourth period and between fourth and fifth period there is only a four minute passing so you're gonna really have to hustle to get to class on time while following the directional signs that we all have to follow to make sure we stay safe okay the last thing that I'm gonna go over with y'all is graduation requirements um, this is standard for every student that wants to graduate high school on a 24 credit option which is our standard diploma Remember, you need to have four credits of English, so that's English 1, English 2, English 3, and English 4. We need to pass both the first and second semester. You need to have four credits of math, and of those four credits, one credit has to be from algebra, so that's sem algebra 1, that's semester 1, and semester 2, and you also have to take geometry, semester 1 and semester 2. You need three years of science or three credits of science. One of those science classes must be biology. You also have to take American history, world history, 
economics, government, hope, and you need to take a fine art. And then the rest of the credits are electives that you can take for whatever you like. And remember, we also have to maintain a 2.0 or higher. So guys, even though you get a D in a class and you get credit for the class and it's passing, a D factors into your GPA as a 1.0. That is lower than a 2.0. Okay, so minimum is a C, which is a 2.0. But really, we want those A's and B's. That's all for me. Good morning, everybody. My name is James Given, Assistant Principal for Student Affairs for the last names M-O through R. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome everyone back to Leonard High School. We're really excited to have you here. Uh, before I dig into some of the more specific expectations, uh, I'd like to say a few words. Everyone has bad days. Some people even have bad weeks. But character and integrity are built on how we react to these bad times. Don't let one moment in time define who you are as a student or a person. You have the power to make positive changes in your life. If your friends are making bad decisions and keep getting you in trouble, you have the power to stop hanging out with those friends. If your grades aren't what you want them to be, you have the power to ask your teachers for help getting your grades up. And above all else, if you are having a bad day or a bad week, you have the power to communicate that to your teachers. Leonard has some amazing teachers and amazing staff, but none of them can read your mind. They are here to help you. Don't bottle up your emotions and take them out on teachers or other students. Communicate with us and we're here to help. All right, let's dig in. Okay, attendance. We all know attendance is key to academic success. You guys need to be on time to class on a regular basis and you need to be in class on a regular basis. If you're not in class, we're going to send automatic calls to your parents so there's no hiding from it. School starts at 840. If you miss more than half of that period, you're considered absent for that period. 15 absences in a 90 day period will get your driver's license revoked. We're going to really stay steadfast on this guys so make sure if you drive to, to school, you're coming because if you get 15 absences, we can suspend your license for that. So if you have work or after school events, you won't be able to drive. Okay, sign in and sign out. Student ID badges are gonna be provided to you guys. More than two sign-ins require a doctor's note or a parent must be present to excuse the sign-in. Excessive sign-ins are considered as skipping. Accompanying parent or guardian must be on the emergency card and have proper documentation. More than four sign outs require a medical and or parent must be present to excuse a sign out. Once you are on campus, you may not leave without permission or signing out. If you're sick, everybody, ask for a pass to go to the nurse from your teacher. The nurse is located in the student affairs office if you have medication that you need to take, please provide a doctor's note and the medication to the nurse so that we can get you that medication if needed. Okay, moving on to just some various information for all students on campus. Once you guys take your pictures and receive your ID cards, you're going to have to have them on you at all times. Because we're wearing masks, Half of your face will be covered, so we need to know who you are. Make sure you have these ID cards on you at all times. Media center passes. A lot of us enjoy going to the media center and studying, and that's an awesome hobby or trait to have. Um, media center passes are going to be requested through Miss Van Pelt, the media center specialist. All right, so once uh, we get things rolling on campus, if you want a media center pass, go to the media center to get one. Due to COVID-19, at this time, we are not going to be selling any lockers at all. It creates touch points that we don't want on campus. If this changes later on in the year, we will let you guys know as soon as possible. Hall passes. Everybody needs a pass if you're in the hall, period, no questions asked. If you are walking the attendance sheet, to the front office, you need a pass. If you are going to the best, the restroom for an emergency, you need a pass. If we see any students the first 10 or last 10 minutes without a pass, we are going to um, 
talk to you, obviously. All right, so the first 10 and first last minutes of class, uh, you're not gonna be in the hallway at all. Any other times you'll need a pass. If you do not have a pass, um, we're going to see you because you guys will stand out like sore thumbs. All right, and if you guys do wish to see any of the assistant principals or uh, any guidance counselors, please message us on Canvas. Um, it's just the easiest way for us to, to meet your, your needs. If it's an emergency, of course, find the nearest adult and they'll help you. All right, cell phone use. We all have cell phones. We all love our cell phones. Follow the guidance of your teachers. If they don't want cell phones in class, put them away, people. If they allow you to have cell phones for a certain project, use them respectfully, all right? Follow your teacher's guidance. Skateboards or hoverboards must be kept in student affairs. Some of you guys actually use these things to get to school, and that's really, really awesome. But we can't have them on campus, all right? So drop them off in student affairs. We have a safe place that we lock them up in, and then we can give them back to you at the end of the day. This goes for any sports equipment as well, right? So footballs, soccer balls, baseballs, anything like that, either leave them in your car or bring them to student affairs. You don't want to get caught with them in the hallway because we could take them. This goes with balloons as well, guys. We all have friends. We all like to celebrate each other's birthdays and celebrate anniversaries, but they cause a distraction. And sometimes they get lost and they go into the air and you never get them back. So if you have balloons, bring them to student affairs and we'll, we'll hang on to them for you. Um, when it comes to food, you can buy food at the cafeteria or bring your lunch. All right, those are the two options. Going off campus to get food is not permitted. Having Uber Eats or Postmates or DoorDash deliver food is not permitted. Having your parents deliver you food is not permitted. So if you want something really good, buy it before school and bring it to school for lunch. All right, everybody? That is all I have for you. Once again, my name is Mr. Given. Find me in the hallways. I'm here to help. Have a great year at Leonard High School. Hello, my lovely Longhorns. I'm Mrs. Calloway. I'm the Assistant Principal of Student Affairs. I work with students with the last names S through Z, so if you ever have any questions, please come see me. I'm going to get started on our dress code policy. So for dress code, if you look at this first slide, what is wrong with this first slide? Well, if you notice, the side of the body is exposed and there are no sleeves. His underwear is visible and shorts are not secured at the waist. Next dress code picture, what is wrong with this one? Well, as we notice, this lovely lady, unfortunately, her clothing is, exposes the middle of her chest and her shorts are shorter than the fingertip length. What is wrong with this, these pictures? Nothing, yay! These students are dressed appropriately and ready to get work started. Here are some things you must ensure that you are doing when you are getting ready to, get, to come to school. Please make sure you do not wear shirts without sleeves. All shirts must have sleeves. Shirts cannot expose the midriff, the mid chest, or the torso. Please keep your pants up. Make sure you have a belt if you need to. If your pants are a little too big around the waist, put a belt on. Shorts and skirts must be fingertip length and shoulders must be covered. Remember, you are not allowed to wear clothes with drugs, bad words, violence, or gangs. Here are some of the dress code do's. Just to ensure, I always say, keep it simple. Dress professional. Be ready for school. Be ready to learn. Here are some of the dress code don'ts. Again, make sure your shorts are fingertip length. Make sure your pants are pulled up above your waist. No midriff. Make sure you have sleeves on your shirts and you're just dressed, you're just dressed appropriately. We are then going to get into the next 
um, point, which is tardies and skipping. The tardy policy, classroom tardy definition. An excused tardy exists when a student is not in his or her assigned seat or roll call area when the tardy bell rings. You will have four to five minutes to transition from class to class, so you have no reason to be tardy. Students arriving late must sign in at the front office. So if you arrive late to school, just go to the front office and you will be signed in. You will have to sign in. We also will have a corral check. This will happen frequently when teachers lock the doors at the bell and all students that are late will report to the corral check and receive an instant consequence for their tardies. Assistant principals will run daily tardy lists to meet students with tardies. We are now going to move on to our zero tolerance. Zero tolerance. SDHC has a very strict anti-bullying, anti-harassment policy. At Leonard, this policy will be enforced to the fullest extent as allowed by the school district of Hillsborough County. All bullying, harassment allegations will be investigated thoroughly. Report any suspicion of bullying, harassment to your teacher or administrator. Be cautious with what you post on social media. Make sure you do not post a threat, intimidation, bullying, and or harassment. Bullying. Bullying means systematically and chronically inflicting physical hurt or psychological distress on one or more students or employees. It is further defined as unwanted and repeated written, verbal, or physical behavior, including any threatening, insulting, or dehumanizing gesture by a student or adult that is severe or pervasive enough to create an intimidating, hostile, or offensive educational environment cause discomfort or humiliation, or unreasonably interfere with individual school performance or participation. Here are some examples but are not limited to bullying. Teasing, stalking, physical violence, sexual and racial harassment, destruction of personal property, social exclusion, cyberbullying, theft, religious, public humiliation, threat, cyber stalking, or intimidation. If you are a victim of bullying, please make sure you clearly tell the bully to stop. Immediately report the incident to someone at the school. It could be any staff member, teacher, administrator. Tell your parents or guardian. If the bullying continues after you have said stop, make a written record. Avoid being alone with that person. Sources of help, please make sure you know, administrators, teachers, our Leonard High School team, guidance counselors, social workers, and parents are here to help. You can always report the bully online at www.sdhc.k12.fl.us or you can call Guidance Services at 273-7074, or you can always contact the School Social Work Services at 273-7090. Bullying, don't be accused of being a bully. Here are ways you will not be accused. If you keep your hands to yourself, Remember that no one has a right to harm any other person in any way. Think before you speak. Immediately apologize if you accidentally say or do something that made another person feel uncomfortable. Report all incidents of bullying behavior you have witnessed. Here are some of the consequences regarding bullying. Guidance referral or mandatory parent conference. Administrative referral. ISS or OSS up to 10 days, change of placement or expulsion. Sexual harassment. Sexual harassment includes, but is not limited to, verbal harassment or abuse of sexual nature, subtle pressure or sexual activity, 
discrimination because of a real or perceived sexual orientation, repeated remarks to an individual with sexual implications. Examples are a person's body, clothes or sexual involvement, pictures or written material. Those being sexually harassed should take the following steps. Please clearly tell the harasser to stop. If the harassment continues, make a written record of the incident that includes the date, time, witness or witnesses, and parties involved. Report the Im incident immediately to adult. Report the incident immediately to your parents or guardian. Public displays of affection. Here are some examples of public displays of affection. Kissing, holding hands, touching inappropriately. These are not allowed at our school. Here are some of the consequences that will come with those public displays of affection. Parent contact, work detail, detention, ISS, or Saturday school. Civility. Leonard High School is dedicated to promoting an educational environment that is free from disruptions, harassment, bullying, and aggressive behavior. Unacceptable behavior includes, but are not limited to, behaviors that interfere with school activities, loud offensive language or profanity, intimidating, harassing, bullying, and inappropriate display of temper, threatening verbal or physical harm, threatening abusive or obscene telephone conversations, written communication, electronic mail, or voice, voicemail. Thank you, Longhorns, and I hope we have a wonderful, successful year. I know we will. Well, hello, Longhorn. My name is Amar. I'm one of the assistant principals for Student Affairs. And if your last name is between C-O-S and H-A, I am your assistant principal. So if you need any help, anything, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. You can email me. You can send me an Edsby message. You can send me a message on Canvas. Whatever best way for you to do, I'm available for you. So today, I'm going to go over the different procedures that we have here at Leonard. So, the, so pretty much we're going to be talking about entry and exit area, arrival procedures, dismissal procedures, bus procedures, passing, the traffic flow, and then the, the, for the breakfast and lunch, and parking, and then for the students that are leaving early, and for some of the ISS. Okay, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the entry and exit area. So this year we only have two ways you can enter the school. The first one is through student affairs, and the second one is through that little breezeway between the cafeteria and the 600 building. So the breezeway between the cafeteria and the 600 building will be only for the students riding the bus. If you're riding the bus, you're gonna get off the bus and that's how you're gonna go. You're gonna go through there, and then if you're going to get breakfast or through the hallways or through the classrooms. The second one is for every other student, whether you're a walker, bike riders, if you get dropped off or if you drive a car, you're going to go through student affairs. So the walkers that are coming from Shell Points, bike riders, has to go all the way around. They cannot go through the bus uh, gates. They have to go all the way around and come through student affairs to enter the school. Two, just remember, only two entry and exit areas. The second one, we're gonna talk about uh, arrival procedures. So, same thing, you know, you're gonna go through the uh, one of those gates. We will have some breakfast carts out there ready for you. And then if you need to get a breakfast, you can get a breakfast from there and then, and then, and then head on your way. So keep in mind, face covering is required at all the times. Before you even get on the bus, you are required to wear a mask. You stay with your mask on the bus, and as you get off of the bus, you always have to have that mask on. And also make sure you practice social distance six feet away. So you always have to have that six feet away between you and somebody else. Bus drivers and attendants will provide students with masks. If you don't have a mask, they'll give you a mask. And also they will remind you with the, with the, with the procedures and the guidelines. They will direct you to sanitize uh, stations where you have to use the hand sanitizers. So what we're asking you is to make sure you listen to the adults 
drivers, bus drivers, have some specific information on how to deal with, with, with the guidelines. So please make sure you follow their guidelines. If they ask you to use the hand sanitizer, just use it. If they give you a mask, ask you to pass a, uh, put a mask on, just put a mask on. We're not here to argue, just do it and follow the directions. Again, you can always, if you have any questions or anything, you can reach to one of us at Student Affairs and just ask us and we'll be more than happy, more than happy to help you. As far as dis uh, dismissal procedures, the dismissal procedures is gonna be different this year where we are going to be staggering dismissal. Keep in mind, the, the bell does not dismiss you. The teacher dismiss you. So even if you hear the bell, you have to wait for the directions from the teacher, teachers to dismiss you. We're talking about at the end of the uh, eight period for dismissal. So what we're doing this year is we're dismissing all the seniors first. We're going to give the seniors a couple minutes to get dismissed and go on their way. And then after that, we'll dismiss by building. So we're, 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 we're going to get on the intercom and we're going to call building by building. When you hear your building, you can exit at that time. So what we're asking you is to, once that dismissal time comes, be quiet and then just make sure you listen to the announcement and once you hear your, your building uh, is ready to exit, then you can do that. And then also after you get dismissed, you have, before students used to, uh, to go to the, uh, uh, to go and hang out with the friends, wait for friends and so on, we're not doing that anymore. So once that bell rings and it's dismissal time, if you're a bus rider, you're gonna go automatically to the bus. If you're a walker, you're gonna go automatically and walk and then, and then, and go outside of the building. So we are asking all of the students not to hang out, not to wait to, to immediately leave campus when that, once the dismissal. So leave campus immediately. If you are part of a club, if we have clubs or athletics, so keep in mind, everything is subject to change. So uh, just make sure you follow the announcement. If you have sports and you have a sport meet or something, so you're gonna go directly to whatever your coach is asking you to do. If their coach is asking you to meet them in a, in, in, in a locker room or in, in, in one of the classroom, that's where you should be going straight. No waiting outside for friends, no pausing or anything. No students will be permitted to sit on a planter and wait. You just have to go and wait. If you are a car rider and you have many other people that uh, ride with you, then you're going to go to your car and then sit in the car and then they can wait for you in the car. Bus room procedures. So you must have to have a mask at all times. Follow the safety procedures. Ride only your designated bus. Remain seated at all times facing forward. Do not throw objects on the bus or out of the window no inappropriate behavior. Keep in mind, it is a privilege to, uh, to, to, to ride the bus and there are some consequences. There are times where you might have to uh, uh, miss the, the bus or, or you to lose this privilege because of some type of behavior. We are confident that none of these issues is gonna happen. We believe in you to do the right thing, to listen to the adults and to follow all the guidelines. Together, we're gonna make sure we, we do everything right. Passing periods. Again, as when you hear the bell and you go from first to second, second to third, we have four to five minutes to, to, to pass those classes. What we're asking you to do is, once you hear the bell, immediately leave and go to the next classroom. You're not waiting for friends, you're not sitting, you're not hanging out, none of that happens. It directly, you're gonna follow the pattern. I'm gonna go over the pattern, how we're gonna do the patterns, and go to the next period. There are going to be adults assigned in all areas to guide you if you need help. One thing is for sure, we do not want you to stand anywhere and wait for a friend because that will hold on the traffic and hold other people's and we don't want that. So you're just gonna go with the flow, just like how cars are, they just flow. If you have any question, you can always ask us. Definitely, 100%, we're not sitting on the planners and then just hanging out between periods. So for the traffic flow, we're gonna, we're, 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 we're gonna go to the right. So every time you leave a classroom, you go straight to the right. So this, this uh, slide right here, it shows you upstairs. This is the upstairs, the 300, the 500 building. You get out of the classroom, you're gonna go to the right. You go all the way to the right. If you're gonna go from the 300 to the 400, you can, that first bridge, you can go right through the bridge. So your teacher will show you the slide and will walk you through the flow and how the flow goes. The only areas where we're gonna have double lines is outside of the 300, going towards the Student Affairs Office and on the other side of the 600 building, where if you are in the 300, you're gonna go this way. You're gonna go straight to the right and, and hit on there. 
The next one is the bottom floor, the same concept. You're always going to the right side, to the right side. So if you are going to the portables, so what we're asking you to do is you're going to the right. Once you get to the 1700 building, we want you to go around behind the 1700 building. If you go into the portables, you go in behind the 1700 building to go to the portables. If you are in the portables, you can just exit and go towards the cafeteria and that's where the flow goes to go to any other any of the buildings. If you're in the back side of the 600 building, we're asking you to always go to the right. So let's say you are in driver's ed and then you want to go to the 300 building. So what you need to do is you're going to exit to the right and you're going to go through the stairs on the back side by the cafeteria, go up, and that's where you're going to go again on the right. You, fo you, you follow the, the pattern. You are not to go left. That's not what we're asking you to do. Stairway flows. So odd buildings, the stairs that are by the 300 and the 500 building are for students that are going up. The stairs that are between the 400 and 600 building are only for the students to go down. The back side of the 600 building is to go up and then, yeah. So for breakfast, it's going to be carts all around the campus. So you can just grab your breakfast and go. And you can eat anywhere as long as you maintain that six feet uh, uh, distance. What we're asking you to do is when you finish eating, please don't, don't just throw the, the, the trash outside. Just we're going to have garbage cans everywhere. Let's keep our campus clean. So throw all of your garbage in, in, in the trash cans. Uh, inside the cafeteria, you will, you will have signs on where to sit and where not to sit. Just follow those guidelines. And we have plenty of staff inside the cafeteria to guide you on where to sit and where to follow the lines. So keep in mind, the administration will always keep those announcements to tell you to make sure you're not sharing food, you're not sharing items, and then you're not passing out food and then you're maintaining the social distance, you're maintaining, you can, you can take obviously the face mark, mask when you're eating, but right after, as soon as you finish eating, you make sure you have to put that mask on again. Be respectful to the lunch ladies, be patient with us, be respectful to everybody else. We know this is not an easy time, we're gonna do our best, and together we will make sure that this is gonna get done and everybody's gonna go home happy. So for seating and, uh, and for breakfast and lunch arrangement, just make sure you follow the signs, make sure you follow where it tells you to sit and then follow the directions of the adults. Um, for, for sign in and sign up procedures, to sign in, again, we have those two locations. If the bell rings at, if bell rings at 840, that's it, all gates are closed, the only entrance area will be the main office. You have to go and you have to sign in. And as you sign in, we're gonna make sure we have the fast masks on and also we are socially distanced. Late students have to go through the main office and has to sign in with one of our secretaries. Um, sign out. Parents will come in and sign you out again at the main office. We'll get you that pass to come in, and then once you come in, you're gonna enter through the main office and then exit, and your parents will be waiting for you at your car. Parking, very important. So parking, Mr. Omar, I am in charge of the parking, so we're asking all the students to, per to purchase the new decal every year. We don't have them as of now yet. I will make that announcement once we have them for you to come and purchase one. They are $20. So this year we're going to make sure that every car that is parked in our student park parking has to have one of these decals. So students violation, violating any of the park regulations will subject to a parking fine of $20. And that's very important. Make sure you have a valid driver license, registration, insurance, and a parent signature. If you miss 15 unexcused, uh, 15, if you have 15 unexcused absences within a 90-day period, your license will be suspended. Keep in mind, for an excuse sign-in per nine weeks, your decal will be removed and you won't be allowed to park in our parking. Mr. Omar is in charge of that. If you have any questions with the parking, just reach out to Mr. Omar. Student leaving early. So we have HCC students, OJT students, dual enrolled students that leave early. All of the students have to leave through the uh, student affair gates. We'll have somebody out there to sign all the students. That's the only exit out. You're not exiting through the, uh, the, the gates that are in between, uh, between the Longhorn or the Jim Breezeway. 
100% nobody is allowed to exit those doors. Nobody is allowed to open those doors. The only exit is through those, uh, the main office. So if you are in OGT, you have to check with Miss Lanes to exit. You have to stay the whole period of lunch. So if you, let's say you have six period lunch and then seven and eight period HCC classes. So you have to stay the whole six period and then leave at the end of the six period, beginning of the seventh period. Mr. Notitis and myself will have a waiver. If you want to leave during your lunch period, so we have waiver for you to give to your parents to sign, and that's the only way you can exit. Students, we are not allowing, it has always been, you're not allowed to get on your car, go get lunch somewhere, and then come back on campus. That's not something we do. Just make sure the only way you can leave this building is if your parents sign you out. ISS procedures. So ISS this year is going to be in the 412. It's a, in the bottom 400 building. We're asking you that there's no food or drinks in there, no talking, there's no card, no electronics, no sleeping, no passes, no hoodies. Just stay seated and then make sure you do your work. We are hoping that we have no students in ISS this year. Just follow the directions. We're here to help you answer all your questions. Reach us to us if you have any questions. Thank you.